How's it going? And welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are back at the Franklin Project. We're going to be working on the air handler today down in the basement. We're going to be running some low volt wires to the zone board, hooking up the drain line, and just trying to get everything connected. Let's do some work. This video is sponsored by Assurity, your complete system for condensate management. For more information, go to assurityhvacr.com. All right, Trevor is down here getting some stuff done. So we got the zone board mounted up here on the supply plenum box. Got most of our low volt wiring ran. We have a couple more to run, but we got that installed, getting everything ran to, the, to that location. We're working on some high voltage as well. I think we're actually gonna end up putting an indoor disconnect right here. And so that way I can have two, uh, two breakers in there to serve each one here. There's a 30 amp and a 60 amp. So this has 15 kW heat in here, even though hopefully we're never gonna use the electric heat, but I like to have it in here just in case. So anyhow, uh, just getting everything hooked up. You know, we got our zone dampers hooked up and wired up to the actuators. He's working on the um, bypass damper now. Got a, getting our 90s installed down here so our, our return ducts can, can just shoot straight up, nice and tight. Uh, we got the, the refrigerant lines already ran the other day, so it's connected completely all the way outside, so that's completely done. So we're looking like, uh, looking good shape. So what I'm gonna focus on now is getting the drain line connected, and it's gonna be a gravity drain all the way over to that corner. There is a sump in that area that the customer is um, good with us draining into. So I guess they have like a natural spring or something under the house. So there's always water in there and there, there's a pump that pumps it out. So, um, so at least on our end, we'll have a gravity drain and um, be less things to worry about, less things to maintain. So I just need to install three switches um, on this air handler. So the style that I like to go with on a, on a gravity drain system is that you're gonna have three connections. You're gonna have, not connections, you're gonna have three safeties. So you're gonna have one in the actual drain line itself, then you're gonna have one in the overflow pan, and then you're gonna have one on the uh, secondary side. So that's three switches that you're gonna have for protection. So theoretically, if the drain line clogs up, the the switch in the drain line should shut the system down, right? First and foremost, before it even overflows the internal pan. Now, for whatever reason that doesn't happen and the internal pan fills up, then the, uh, the secondary switch that'll be into this pan should shut the system down before any water overflows and goes into the return plenum or down into this pan. And then for some reason that doesn't work, then we have a wet switch that will, uh, if it senses any water, it's gonna shut the system down. So that is three levels of protection when it comes to condensate or condensation. And um, for me, I've, I've been doing that for a while and it works really well. Because ultimately, I don't want water to overflow and get into my ductwork or into this pan. It should shut down way before that. So the, the uh, switches that I'm gonna be installing today, uh, these are all by Assurity. And this particular one can be installed in multiple orientations, but the way I'm gonna use this one today is gonna to be in the actual drain line. So it'll be downstream, or I'm sorry, it'll be um, right at the unit before it goes into the trap. So that way if the trap clogs up, this thing should sense that it's uh, overflowing. So, so we got that one. And then here is the overflow switch for the secondary side. So these are pretty, all, all of these are really easy to install, but that's gonna go right next to the, uh, the primary. And again, it hopefully will stop the internal pan from overflowing. So we'll install that one there. And then this one is the, uh, the wet switch. So this particular pan is made by Diversitech and they already have the indentions pre-made into the pan. So that's that hockey puck switch or the wet switch fits right in there um, nicely. And then all we have to do is just run our wires up into the cabinet, 
and brake R, and we should be good to go. So one of the reasons I like to use the Assurity brand is because water issues is a big deal, especially in the South with a lot of humidity. So they actually have what's called the Assurity Promise. So if you use their, their system here, they're gonna give you a two year coverage of up to $2,500 against any water damage claims. And then if you show proof of a three year maintenance agreement on the equipment, they'll actually extend it to four years. So that is a fantastic, um, you know, thing to have to show to your customer or to offer to your customer, because again, in the South, water is a big deal. So we want to make sure we are doing a good job installing the equipment for one, but for two, um, to protect the customer's assets in their home. And that's what these products allow you to do. So no matter what, if it's in a garage or attic or whatever it is, um, we can protect their assets. So again, a surety is really good for having this type of uh, promise to where you, you know you're covered no matter what you run into. All right, so as you can see here, the primary drain is fully open. All right, and that's the lowest side of the pan. And then if you look up here on the secondary, the hole is actually much smaller. So basically what that does is it doesn't allow the water to come through as easily. The, the pan actually has to fill up with water before it comes out of that hole. So that's why we put our um, secondary switch there. And um, you just wanna make sure you don't do the opposite because I've done that in the past, not thinking, and uh, had to come back a few hours later because the unit was shut down. All right, so for the secondary, I'm gonna be using the Assurity. This is the CS-2. This is basically designed to be um, installed only in one way. So you've got your male fitting here. That just goes in there. Get that snugged up. And then I like to just friction fit these on. That way you can remove them if you need to for troubleshooting purposes or whatever the case is. But it's nice and snug. Again, you're not gonna have water coming out of here unless there's a problem anyway. So that's the CS-2. Now their CS-1 actually has three ways you can install this particular switch. You can have it in line where it's got PVC coming in one side, PVC coming out the other, and you glue both connections. Um, or you could do it to where you use it like a secondary switch where you can put in a male thread and then it slides directly on that way. And then thirdly, you can install it the way that I'm gonna be installing it today. And that's gonna be in a T orientation. So that's the way it comes out of the box. You can remove that, the actual switch, and then you can remove the reducer. And see, you have basically um, some options there. So what I'm gonna do, the bottom already has the reducer for the three quarter PVC, so I'm gonna leave that in there. That's what's gonna come into the bottom, and which will go into the, the trap that I'm gonna be building here in a second. So what I'm gonna do is install this in this orientation. So um, you put the switch on the top side. And then once that's installed, your trap is here. Let's say your trap fills up with water and it starts to build up, back up and overflow. The switch catches that and it will shut the system down. So um, anyway, three different ways you can install it. That's the way I'm gonna install it today. All right, so this is what I've gotten so far. Went ahead and just built my own custom trap. So the, ma the manual for this air handler called for a P-trap where to where the top of the outlet of the coil to the top of the drain exiting your trap is a minimum of three inches. So I've got about four. And then from the top of the outlet of the coil to the bottom of your trap has to be a minimum of five inches. And I believe I've got um, like six and a half to seven. So I've got my own custom trap here, which is good. We got to um, make sure that's the right size. Always check your manual for that. And then secondly, um, because the way I have installed this uh, CS-1 is that you can remove the actual switch. 
So that gives you an option for clean out um, at, at this particular point here. So you have a clean out to see what's inside the trap. And then secondly, um, you have a breather here. So on the exiting side of your trap, you wanna put a breather and you wanna make sure it's higher than the top of your coil. I'm sorry, the top of your internal pan. So that way, once the water leaves the trap, there won't be uh, basically like a vacuum on the drain line going and leaving. It'll allow it to breathe and it'll flow a whole lot better um, to where it's, where it's exiting. So that's in a nutshell how you want to make your own trap. Um, just make sure it's deep and tall enough for what the manufacturer recommends. Uh, make sure you have a clean out and you make sure you have a breather. All right, so one thing I wanted to add for serviceability, I put a union here because if you ever want to get this panel off, you need to be able to remove these two switches. And because this is a friction fit, you can just remove that. And then once you disconnect this, you'll be able to spin this fitting all the way out because that is glued. And then this will be out of your way. There'll be nothing impeding. And you can take this panel off. You can service the coil, um, clean it, whatever you got to do. But that's what I like to do. Just a nice little PVC union. Alrighty, so the drain is now complete. We got it ran all the way over there to the uh, sump pump area. And got all of our safeties ran. They're not terminated yet. So I'm gonna have to extend the wet switch. Didn't quite reach all the way up where it needs to go. So we'll have to do that, but I'll do that once we get everything wired up and all of that. At least we have it in place. But it's looking good. What's really cool about these switches, the wet switch, this has a green light if everything is good. Red means it's been tripped and you have to manually reset it, which is nice. Um, I really do not like pans filling up with water before it actually trips the switch. So this does it way sooner. So that's really nice. And the same thing with these, the uh, CS1, the CS2, has, there's a little red LED right here if it has been tripped. So, which is really nice for the homeowner or the technician. Um, if something's not working right, they can easily come down and see, yep, that switch is tripped or that one or that one, whatever it is. So, um, one thing is whenever I, I cut and put my union in there, I think I took out a little bit too much pipe. So now it's kind of angled a little bit, but oh well. It is what it is. But yeah, we got our wires coming up the side here. We'll make sure we silicone that to where that's airtight. Um, but that's pretty much gonna be it for today. We have, so we gotta come back. Obviously we need to do the, the line voltage. So I have to get a indoor uh, four circuit or six circuit disconnect that's gonna be there with two breakers. So we'll wire that in. Um, and then what else? The biggest task is going to be cutting through the wall for the 14 and the 16 inch duct coming through for that zone. That's the biggest task. But other than that, we are getting close to wrapping this job up. So, which is exciting. But yeah, pretty happy with the uh, progress so far. All right, so that's gonna pretty much wrap up what we're gonna be doing on this project for today. Um, I'm gonna leave a link down in the description for you for that assurity promise. Um, for me, as a contractor, that's a big deal to be able to offer to your clients, you know, especially if they have equipment that's up in the attic. Because um, here in the South, with the humidity, we get tons of water problems and it just messes up the ceiling and all of that, and you just don't want that. So being able to um, offer that to your customers, 
it's a big deal. So anyhow, I'll leave that in the description for you. Go ahead and check that out. Um, but that's going to complete today's video. I really hope you got something out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, see you guys later.